All right, continuing with stock valuation, now we'll look at the second model. That's the non-constant growth valuation model. Um, now, when we consider non-constant growth valuation, it is, of course, a lot more realistic because as companies make investments and uh, ex uh, capital uh, expenditures into their organization or they expand or they launch new products, it is natural that that will reflect in the value of the organization. It will change their growth rates and that should, again, reflect in the intrinsic value that we calculate for that particular stock. Now, uh, this case will naturally be a little more complex than the constant growth valuation version. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue using Brigham and Houston's Fundamentals of Financial Management as a foundation. And we're going to look towards their question 9-4, that's right over here, 9-4, to understand uh, the basic situation that we want to solve for non-constant growth valuation. Now this question says Hart Enterprises recently paid a dividend of 1.25. Now whenever we consider timelines, recently paid means that it has already been paid. And again, keep in mind that the wording of the situation itself should be an indication of the information that they're giving us. So when they've recently paid it, that is a D naught, the dividend that has already been given. D naught is going to be 1.25 dollars. Uh, now, alongside this, it says that it expects to have a non-constant growth of 20% for two years. Now, what I like to do in this particular case is use a timeline. A timeline helps me to visually identify what is happening in this particular situation. So here we've got time zero. I want to find out what the value of this share will be today, that is time zero. And for the next two years, that's one year here and the second year there. For these two years, we're going to have a super normal growth rate or a non-constant growth rate of 20%. So I like to place that over there. It gives me a visual idea of what's happening to this company over the next two years. Followed by a constant rate of 5% thereafter. So the third year onwards, this is going to become constant and it is expected to continue in this way forever. Now, um... The firm's required rate of return is 10%. So this is the information that we've been given. Using this particular timeline, using this information, we should be able to understand or to be able to calculate what the value of the stock is. Part A says how far away is the terminal or horizon date. Now whenever they give you a, ter a terminology like terminal date or horizon date, keep in mind that this is referring to the value, the foundational value of the stock based on a constant growth rate. So if the terminal value or horizon date, n terminal date or horizon date needs to be determined, we need to see where this company is going to start having constant growth rate. Now, if the constant growth rate is expected from the third year onwards, remember this point represents the end of the third year, but this 5% is implemented from the beginning of the third year towards the end of the third year. That means that from the very end, from the very beginning of the third year, we will be able to calculate our terminal value or our horizon value. So the terminal or horizon date is represented by the first day of the third year. Um, let's take an assumption over here and say that this is the year 2010. This would be, sorry, 2020. 2021 and 2022 and that would mean that our third year is 2023 so if our third year represents 2023 that means that our terminal date for part a would be the 1st of january 2023 now moving forward to part B, it says, what is the firm's horizon or terminal value? That basically means that what is the value of this stock on this particular date? To calculate the terminal value, we need to understand the values that contribute to this particular stock. The terminal or horizon value is determined by the constant growth model. So once again, the model is P0 equals to D1 divided by R minus G, where the growth rate is equal to our constant growth rate. R is our required rate of return. D1 is the next expected dividend. And P0 represents the terminal or horizon value. Now keep in mind, based on this particular date, that what we're actually looking for this 
equation will translate into P2 equals to D3 divided by R minus G if we were to use this particular timeline. Now we don't have any of these values which means we need to calculate them. I mean we have a constant growth rate and we have a required rate of return but we, ha we do not have a dividend and therefore until we calculate that we cannot find the horizon or terminal value. In order to calculate D3, we need to know the prior numbers. So here we'll do a quick dividend calculation. We'll start off with D0. We've been given that as 1.25 in our initial information. Using that, we're going to calculate D1, D2, as well as D3. Now, remember, to calculate the next possible dividend, we'll take the previous dividend and we'll multiply by 1 plus G. That is the expected growth rate on that particular dividend. What you have to be careful with in this particular situation is because it is a non-constant growth situation, the first year will apply a 20% growth rate. So that means it'll be 1.25 multiplied by 1.20. What I'm doing over here is I'm calculating this within one step. So it would actually be 1 plus 0 0.20, and I've just added those two together as 1.20. So if we calculate this on our calculator, we get 1.25 multiplied by 1.20 and the number that we get is 1.5 and then to calculate d2 we need d1 and again the formula remains exactly the same the logic remains exactly the same so we'll have 1.5 multiplied by now the growth rate over here is going to be the second year growth rate which we placed over here at 20 percent so again 1.20 and if we multiply that, it's 1.5 multiplied by 1.2, so we get $1.8. dollars. And to calculate D3, we'll need D2. So D2 times 1 plus G, that means 1.8 multiplied by, now here be very careful because our growth rate is our constant growth rate of 5%, so 1.05. And if we do 1.8 multiplied by 1.05, we get $1.89. Now this third dividend is exactly what we need to calculate our intrinsic value. Um, so in order to do this, what we want to do